Hey guys, I wanted to answer this question for um, Brother Kevin um, and Emmanuel. I haven't forgotten you. I've got your your um, question. I'm going to get to that. I'm still working something out uh, with it, but uh, I did want to answer this verse, Kevin. This is a great idea. Um, so I'm going to go over this. Now I've used this verse in a way that I may, I may be considered a little different than the actual context of it. But Kevin's like, why don't you do a video explaining what it means by no one can call Jesus Lord except it be by the Holy Ghost. Well, I, I would need to read at least chapter 12 and part of 13 in 1 Corinthians. So go to 1 Corinthians 12 and we're going to read starting at the beginning of the chapter. So the context is spiritual gifts, okay? Not It's not saying that uh, a human being without the Spirit of God can't speak the words, Jesus is Lord, okay? It's not saying that. Unsaved people without the Spirit of God can say Jesus is Lord, right? It's... It, it, I don't think a person can get the revelation of Jesus being Lord God Almighty without the Spirit. But I don't think that's what this is actually saying per se. I think it's in reference to spiritual gifts and discerning of spirits. Now, it, I can't go to every chapter here in this letter because we have to think of the letter as a whole. But we do see Paul talking about where they they used to be pagans and they were in darkness and they're you know even in this idolatry there was supernatural activity okay so supernatural or spiritual activity does not mean it's necessarily from god we know that there are little g gods that uh, could do, you remember Moses when he did the miracles? Those guys did them up to a certain point. Then they couldn't, you know, they couldn't touch God's miracles. But they were replicating what Moses did and nobody was shocked they could turn sticks into serpents. But it, it was, the magicians could do it. It was Janus and Jambres, I think. But the point is, just because something's supernatural, and let me be clear here, just because something is supernatural and feels good hmm, doesn't mean it's the Holy Spirit. Okay? So I believe in a nutshell what he's saying is, help, I'm in a nutshell. No, that's not what he's saying. Um, I think in a nutshell what's going on here is he's saying you can tell when they're speaking tongues, which different languages, except uh, when it talks about this one. Th these are languages. Um, and they're uh, needed to give the gospel out to different nationalities of people. Uh, and with that comes an interpreter that's given the gift of interpreting a foreign language to let the congregation uh, know what is being said um, for those that don't speak that tongue or language, right? Uh, you can he see on Pentecost when... Uh, Peter spoke in tongues, it meant that everybody heard his own language. It says that, you know, so there, if you were from, you know, Spain or Italy, you heard Latin uh, or, you know, uh, Aramaic or, you know, whatever language you spoke, that is what you heard Peter speaking in. And it was supernatural because as he spoke, everybody heard a different language. Uh, and it's the same thing. There were a lot of uh, different languages in these larger cities. And in order to get the gospel to everyone, they were given supernatural gifts. And he says, you know, it's for the unbeliever, not the believer. It's, it's to encourage the unbeliever. It's a sign. So that's the context of this chapter. So I think what he's saying is if you're speaking and he tells him if you're speaking in an unknown tongue and then another person speaking in another tongue and y'all look crazy, right? 
He tells me, no, do things decently in order, desire spiritual gifts, um, but it's better for you to prophesy so everybody can be um, edified, right, by the message. And one way to discern, because the gift uh, he talks about here also is the gift of discernment. And he goes over all these different spiritual gifts. But one thing that you can always know uh, and discern is of the Holy Spirit and not just any spirit showing up. Because I dare say that there are, there's, I don't want to say it, demonic tongues. Or a, 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 a evil spirit can just as easily speak in another language you need this you need discernment to know if he's being moved by the right spirit so i want to say that it's kind of a rule of thumb that he's saying if if the holy spirit speaking in him he's gonna be proclaimed lord right he's not gonna diminish jesus the Holy Spirit will always uplift Jesus and teach us about Jesus, right? He'd never say something uh, to put Jesus down or, like it says, call him accursed. Now, we know he, was, he became a curse for us, right? But we don't say that he's cursed by God. God is, you know, that's not something... Uh, uh, the, that we would say, and it's not something any Christian believes. And so he's taking both ends of the ruler here and saying uh, the spirit would definitely say Jesus is Lord, and he certainly wouldn't say he's a curse. So he wouldn't say anything bad about Jesus, and he's always going to lift him up and show us that he's Lord, say that he's Lord. So I think this is about discernment, spiritual gifts, and uh, how it all works together, okay? And that you can always tell because there's supernatural uh, things that show up that's not of God, you know? There, there's things that uh, work in the hearts and minds of people in false religion, uh, for instance, the, the Mormons talk about this burning in their bosom. That's their proof, right? That it's so true, but it's a lying sign and wonder, okay? We we know there's lying signs and wonders. I believe these Mary apparitions that teach blasphemous antichrist messages are obviously not of God. They never elevate Jesus. They always elevate his human mother, Mary, who is blessed and called blessed because she was the vessel for our Lord, but she was human and offered sacrifices for her own sin. Uh, so I, uh, I wanted to give that context. It's not as clear. Uh, you kind of have to read it in the context of the entire book and, and what's going on in this letter. Uh, but if I just read the chapter and given the information I've given you, if you go back to 1 Corinthians and read the whole letter, you'll see bits and pieces of how I've, I've gleaned that. And this chapter in particular talks about the spiritual gifts. So, chapter 12 says, Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren. So we see that's the context of what he's discussing. I would not have you ignorant. Ye know that ye were Gentiles carried away unto these dumb idols, even as you were led. Ha! You see that? Something supernatural was leading you to bow before these dumb idols. You knew dumb meaning can't speak, okay? Not stupid. It's just they can't speak. And they can't do anything. They're, they can't, they're wood or, or gold or whatever. But something led you to bow before them. Now he does tell us there is supernatural power behind these things. Nothing to be feared. But it's not just that you're bowing down to this thing. There's supernatural forces at work. 
Okay, you were led. You know that when you were Gentiles, carried away into these dumb idols, even as you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand that no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed, and that no man can say that Jesus is Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. All right? So he's saying, somebody comes in here showing a supernatural sign, speaking in tongues. You don't know uh, what's going on. You need an interpreter. The interpreter tells you what he's saying. If he starts saying things where in, in the vein of Jesus being accursed, you know that supernatural sign or wonder is not, is not the Holy Spirit, right? But if he's saying Jesus is the Lord, uh, that is the Holy Spirit. So I think it's trying to tell them how to discern what spirit is at work during uh, uh, tongue speaking. Okay. Now, there are diversities of gifts, but the same spirit. So he goes on to show why, why we can't all have the same gift, people. This is why it drives me crazy when they say you, you're not saved until you speak in tongues. And that's not biblical tongues, first of all. Secondly, Paul makes it clear not everybody has the same gift. Do all speak in tongues? Do all uh, have prophecy? It's a hypothetical meaning, no, they don't. They all have different gifts, but you should desire the best gifts, of course. But realize that some things are going to seem like it's more glamorous. Some gifts seem more glamorous, may get you more attention. Other gifts are way down here and you might feel like you've been left out, but every one of them is necessary. And so there's a diversity of gifts here, okay? And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord, you're not getting less. It's the same Lord. It's the same spirit. And there are diversities of operations. See, there's a lot of jobs that need to be done, but it's the same God which worketh in all. So even though something might seem more glamorous, it doesn't mean that God is favoring someone more than another. Um, so, it, and, and why is he doing this? If you remember, the Corinthian church was a mess. They were taking each other to court, suing each other. There was fornication commonly reported among them. They were getting drunk, overeating like pigs, like some bacchanalian feast, the Dionysus party or something, uh, and then forsaking the poor during the Lord's Supper. That's why he's like, uh, y'all ain't got houses you can eat at home for you come if you're that hungry. But they were treating it like some gluttonous, drunken feast, and some of them had gotten sick and even slept or died early, right? So that's what's going on here. And so there's division, fighting amongst them. And of course, they're going to fight over the gifts. You know, your gift's better than mine. How come he gets this gift? And well, there's a lot of operations here. Also, there's so many people talking in different languages at the same time. And how do we know? You know, he's saying just because somebody speaks in a, a different language and it doesn't necessarily, it's God. You need to have other people with other gifts like discernment but here's a basic rule okay if somebody is speaking in a language you don't know and somebody interprets it and tells you he's saying this well the holy spirit wouldn't say that but if he's saying this it's the spirit of god because no no uh, no other spirit's going to proclaim jesus is the lord of course the holy spirit's always going to bear witness to jesus being the lord so um so, but the manifestation of the spirit is given to every man to profit with all. So it's for the benefit of everyone. For to one is given by the spirit, the word of wisdom. To another, the word of knowledge by the same spirit. Hold on one second. You know, a lot of these gifts have been redefined by, you know, uh, say, modern charismatic circles sometimes. Uh, and it says, to another, faith by the same spirit. To another, the gifts of healing by the same spirit. So you see what he's saying here? You're all one 
because there's one God, one body, one capital S spirit working in all of you. Many gifts, many diver diverse gifts, many operations, many needs for the body of Christ. But there's one body and there's one God and there's one spirit. So you should be together as one. It's for the benefit of all. So uh, to another, the working of miracles, to another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, diverse kinds of tongues. So many languages. Okay? The word tongues there, I don't know why it confuses people. Tongues always means language. To another, the interpretation of tongues. Okay? So there's one that's going to speak in a language people don't know. And there's another that's going to interpret it. So those that don't know that language will understand. And the way you can tell if the spirit is moving, don't think just because something's supernatural or somebody has a spiritual gift that they're of God. You have to test the spirits. You need you need uh, uh, discernment here. So that's why he says you're led. You can see there's a very subtle uh, context here of what's going on. But all these work at that one and the self-same spirit. He's trying to make them come together and stop having so much division. Dividing to every man severally as he will. For as the body is one and has many members, and all the members of that body, being many, are one body, so also is Christ. See, Christ isn't divided. Uh, he's not preferring one member over another member. For by one spirit, you see, he uses one, one, one over and over again. Are we all baptized into one body, whether we be Jews or Gentiles? I did a video on this the other day. God is one people, believers. Doesn't matter what they are. Believers. Whether we be bond or free and have all been made to drink into one spirit. For the body is not one member. But many, if the foot shall say, because I am not the hand, I am not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? And if the ear shall say, because I'm not the eye, I'm not of the body. Is it therefore not of the body? If the whole body were an eye, where were the hearing? If the whole were hearing, where were the smelling? You see, if everybody had the same gift, something would be left undone. Something necessary and needed for the whole body to function would be missing. If everybody was an eyeball, nobody'd hear anything. Okay? So when you have this, you need people to discern it. You might not have that gift of that. You need to discern it. It's about gifts. So it's about uh, discerning uh, the supernatural gifts. So no one can call Jesus Lord except it be by the Holy Ghost. Or no one would call Jesus Lord. Let's look at how it's written. Anyways, to show you the, the, the far end of what the Spirit would say and what the Spirit would never say. Okay? It's a way uh, to determine. Let's see. Let me go back up there. All right. Because um, it says, you know how you were led. Wherefore, I give you to understand. That no man speaking by the Spirit of God calleth Jesus accursed. And that no man can say that Jesus is the Lord, but by the Holy Ghost. So, they're speaking in a tongue, you don't understand. The interpreter tells you what it says. If the, 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 the Spirit is speaking things about Jesus being the Lord and, and elevating him, it's of God. It's the Holy Spirit. But if, if, if he comes in on this end of the spectrum, it might be supernatural. But don't be don't be fooled by it. All right. Because he reminds them about being idolaters. Don't you remember how you were led? You were led by something supernatural. All right. So he finished. And all those members of the body which we think to be less honorable, upon these we bestow more abundant honor. And our uncomely parts have more abundant comeliness. Okay, so he's saying if you have a gift that God gives you that you think is less desired and it's lowly, 
maybe you, I don't know, you have a, a gift of a, a prayer warrior. You're just a person that prays for people and, and you want to be out there uh, speaking languages. Well, if it's a lower, like you're a servant, if, if it's a lower position, that position should be honored above any position that shows off. Because if you want to be greatest in the kingdom, be least. You see? Same thing Jesus said. You want to be greatest? Be the least. Be the most humble. He washed their feet. The Lord God <laughs> manifest in the flesh did that. And we can't humble ourselves. So that's why he says, it, give more honor to the position that seems less honorable. And whether one member suffer, all the members suffer with it. Or one member be honored, all the members rejoice with it. Now ye are the body of Christ and members in particular. And God has set some in the church, first apostles, second, secondarily prophets, thirdly teachers, after that miracles and gifts of healings, helps, governments, diversities of tongues, are all apostles, are all prophets, are all teachers, are all workers of miracles, have all the gifts of healing. These are obviously no, these are hypothetical uh, questions because the obvious answer is no because there's many members and many needs and many operations do all speak with tongues hmm that should show you right there uh that's not proof of anybody being saved uh and by the way it's not proof that somebody's speaking by the holy spirit either that's why you need a what an interpreter and you need discerners discerners of spirits why would you why would he mention that there in the in the context of tongues? Because if you don't know what's being said, he needs to discern if that spirit is of God. If you don't have an interpreter, how can you know what he's saying? And if you don't know what he's saying, you don't know if he's saying Jesus is Lord or he's cursed. So we see the context is gifts, but covet earnestly the best gifts, and yet show I unto you a more excellent way. So uh, that is the initial context and meaning of that verse. I have used it before to say no one can call Jesus Lord except be by the Holy Ghost in the sense of people uh, preaching lordship, you know, because they, they couldn't be going to make him Lord of your life. Uh, well, a person can't even acknowledge or understand he's the Lord, and they certainly wouldn't elevate him as the Lord without the Spirit's um, uh, um, prompting them or showing them the truth. Now, we see uh, uh, people seeing all kinds of miracles and just denying that he's the Lord, saying his power came from Beelzebub, the devil himself. So the Spirit will always lift up Jesus. And I was saying earlier that I think one way we've gotten off course is to want that some, you know, want the spirit's presence, but modern ways or churches usually mean they want to feel something supernatural. We've got to be very careful about that just because something's supernatural and just because something's supernatural and feels good doesn't mean it's of God. We need to discern that. And one way we know is the Spirit will always proclaim Jesus as Lord and make it all about Jesus. The Spirit of God will never elevate himself, like, like bear witness to himself all the time. It's always going to be Jesus, because the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ, right? So if your church isn't, isn't Jesus-focused and Jesus-centered, I'd worry, okay, because the Holy Spirit, he tells you, he's going to teach, teach you about me, and it's the answer to everything. Our faith is a person. Truth is a person. Our righteousness is a person. Our sanctification is a person. Our life is a person. Everlasting life is the person, Jesus. 
truth is Jesus. I mean, he's everything and it's all about him. And so we can know that somebody's of God because they will always elevate Jesus. All right, you guys. Good night.